the biggest oil spill catastrophe in the ocean, a nuclear disaster that sank islands, and a sea that turned into a desert. In today's video, we'll go over three of the worst man-made environmental disasters. Before we move forward, don't forget to like this video and subscribe to Tech World. Number 3. The Deepwater Horizon Oil Spill The oil boom of the 1970s changed the political, economic, and industrial landscape of the world. As the dependence on oil increased, drilling into the heart of the ocean also became more frequent. However, along with the hopes of prosperity, the fears of an environmental disaster also increased. Strict rules and regulations were put into place to avoid an inevitable disaster, but in 2010, those fears came to life in the form of the largest oil spill disaster in history. On April 20th, 2010, a deepwater offshore drilling rig called the Deepwater Horizon exploded, resulting in the death of 11 workers and an immeasurable loss to the ecosystem. In theory, the 125-meter-long rig was equipped with the latest disaster prevention systems, but on that fateful day, with the mix of human error and technical issues, all systems collapsed. It all started when the crew on board decided to temporarily halt drilling into a deepwater well and started pumping cement into the hole to prevent oil and gas leakage. However, the cement did not seal the well properly as oil and gas began to leak out and started traveling up towards the surface. Even though pressure tests were in place to deal with such situations, the results were misinterpreted and the tests were ultimately deemed normal. After this fatal error, the oil and gas started to travel up to the surface and began destroying other safety mechanisms in place. The rig was equipped with a blowout preventer to close down the safety valves in case of an emergency. The blowout preventer had two separate systems to initiate it automatically, but both failed owing to a flat battery and a faulty switch. There was no coordinated response from the crew, and the system was deemed too complex to call upon in the time of an emergency. So one error after another resulted in an explosion that was visible from many kilometers away. Holy shit, look at that! Holy shit! Something just blew up. The loss of the 11 workers was just one tragic aspect of the accident. Three to five million barrels of oil spilled into the ocean, and over the next three months, it became the largest offshore oil spill in history. Within the first week of the incident, the spill surpassed the Exxon Valdez oil spill of 1989 which was the previous biggest oil spill in U.S.-controlled waters. But that wasn't the end of it. The leakage continued for 87 days, and an average of 60,000 barrels kept spilling every day. By the time it was finally controlled, the Deepwater Horizon oil spill broke the previous record of the world's worst oil spill, the Ixtoc-1 leak in Mexico in 1979. As a direct consequence, marine life suffered terribly as millions in the ocean died. One-tenth of the oil spill sank to the ocean floor, causing permanent damage. The spill spread over an area of 180,000 square kilometers, which is equal in size to the state of Oklahoma. A lengthy legal process was initiated after the incident, and British Petroleum, the company leasing the Deepwater Horizon, was fined $20.8 billion, which remains the largest environmental damage settlement in United States history. An unprecedented fine wasn't the only cost of the error. The company was also ordered to incur cleanup costs, and the cleanup process itself wasn't straightforward either. The first step was to employ floating booms that surrounded the rig to keep the oil from spreading. After that, they used skimmers to collect the oil that had already leaked out. The effort wasn't too successful, as they succeeded in collecting just 2% of the total spill. Further mopping up was done by using controlled burning and the use of dispersants and absorbents. Despite the efforts, only one-sixth of the total spill has been removed so far, while the cleanup costs and fines have surged up to $80 billion. More than a decade after the disaster, the oil spill continues to threaten wildlife, and it is predicted that some of the species might take more than 70 years to recover from it.
Number 2. Castle Bravo The tail end of the Second World War introduced humanity to the most destructive weapons ever known. The bombings of Hiroshima and Nagasaki remain a divisive topic of discussion to this day. The destruction suffered by the two cities was huge, but the powerful weapons detonated during the war were nowhere close to the Castle Bravo test conducted less than nine years later. Bikini Atoll had been a U.S. nuclear testing site since 1946. There had been nuclear tests on the island before, but in March 1954, one such test went horribly wrong. The scientists were going to test a device with a yield of 5 megatons. However, they made a huge error, and once the device went off, it produced a yield of 15 megatons. To put that into perspective, the bomb that went off was 1,000 times more powerful than the bomb that was dropped over Hiroshima. Once the device went off, it was a sight like no other. The mushroom cloud formed after the explosion was so big that it went 40 kilometers into the sky. That's four times higher than traditional airliners fly. Those who caught a glimpse couldn't keep their eyes open, and some even referred to it as the second sun. Castle Bravo created a 100-meter deep hole in the ocean, and the radioactive fallout spread over a vast area in the Pacific Ocean. In the immediate aftermath, a Japanese fishing vessel named the Lucky Dragon was caught in the fallout some 150 kilometers away from the site of the explosion. One of the crew members died of the sickness in the following days, while others suffered major illnesses. The incident caused a major diplomatic hiccup between the two countries, given their history, and the United States had to pay compensation to those affected. The lives of the residents of the Marshall Islands were disrupted, as they had to leave their homes forever. But that wasn't the end of the story. Arguably, there was a much bigger human blunder, as the islanders were not informed about the disaster right away. As the radioactive fallout started raining on the residents, they were caught unaware. Many thought that it was snow, and according to some accounts, children ate it off their bodies. The Marshallese continue to suffer serious health consequences to this day. According to a 2010 report, in the aftermath of the incident, cancer cases skyrocketed, and 50% of the total cases can be attributed to the nuclear fallout. Sixteen years later, the United States government tried to resettle a few families at the Bikini Atoll, as they declared the area safe. However, they were removed yet again after ingesting high levels of radiation. The Castle Bravo incident remains the largest radiological disaster in U.S. history. However, it is only the fifth largest nuclear explosion in history, and quite some way behind the biggest nuclear device ever detonated. That record is held by the Soviet Union's test of the Tsar Bomba, with a yield of 50 megatons. Number 1. Aral Sea Completing today's list is a man-made disaster that was termed the most staggering disaster of the 20th century by the United Nations Development Program. The Aral Sea was once the fourth largest water lake in the world, even bigger than Lake Michigan and Lake Huron. Because of its sheer size, it served as the hub of the Soviet fishing industry. At its peak in the 1950s, it produced over 40,000 tons of fish annually, representing one-sixth of the total fish production in the Soviet Union. The lake was surrounded by fishermen settlements and provided jobs to at least 40,000 workers that lived in the region surrounding the lake. All that changed at the brink of the 1960s, when the Soviet Union put into motion its ambition to become the world's largest producer of cotton. Central Asia's vast unfarmed lands were picked for agricultural expansion, spelling doom for the Aral Sea. Cotton is a water-thirsty crop, and under the new irrigation schemes, water from the Aral Sea's two biggest water suppliers, Amu Darya and Sir Darya, was to be diverted into the newly cultivated farmlands. By the 1980s, the Soviet Union had become the fourth largest producer of cotton. The Aral Sea, however, was suffering. An engineering flaw in designing the irrigation system meant that a lot more water was being withdrawn from the canals than originally intended. 
The lake was shrinking year by year, and its depth reduced from over 60 meters in 1960 to just 10 meters in the next two decades. The engineers did realize the grave mistake, but it was too late. The Aral Sea was now getting only 10% of the water inflow of the 1960s, and by 1987, it was divided into two distinct parts, the North and the South Aral Sea. The loss of water carried dire consequences for the ecosystem. As evaporation accelerated, the seabed became salty, triggering the death of almost all fish. The sea started turning into a desert and brought with it dust storms that worsened the air quality by transporting salt and agricultural waste into nearby settlements. The desert-like environment also meant that the summers became hotter and the winters were now much colder. Air quality affected the residents who suffered from breathing problems, and at one point, the child mortality rate reached 7.5%. The local population started calling the poisonous seabed the dry tears of the Aral. Naturally, there was mass migration as fishing communities moved towards the urban centers for better opportunities. The nearby towns were completely deserted and the once prosperous fishing industry vanished. Abandoned fishing trawlers and vessels can be seen in the dried out waters to this day, painting a grim picture of the devastation experienced over four decades. The breaking up of the Soviet Union in 1991 had a silver lining for the dying lake, as two newborn countries, Kazakhstan and Uzbekistan, shared the Aral Sea coastline. There were immediate efforts to revive the lake's ecosystem as the Central Asian countries became part of an $85 million United Nations Aral Sea Rehabilitation Program. After a few setbacks, the project found major success in 2005 in the form of a 13-kilometer-long dam that pumped water back into the northern part. The dam was successful in raising the water level by 4 meters in just 6 months. This allowed for the fish to come back, and with the use of fish breeding techniques, the North Aral started to restore its ecosystem. A few fishermen have returned, and the fish catch has started to go up as well. Thanks to the concerted efforts, one part of the Aral Sea is recovering. Bringing it back to its past glory might be a bridge too far, but the tears of the Aral might be wiped off finally. What do you think of these colossal man-made disasters? Can we recover from these? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. If you want to see more about similar topics, you can watch our video about how to clean an ocean. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.